Hey guys, what's up, and welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today, I've got some fun things to show you. To kick things off, I thought I'd show you a few new textures that we've got going. And uh, I think it's better to look at it in the creative world. I've hooked up another portal over to our area over in the Mesa. And uh, wow, I wanted to show you, just in case you like this world where you play on the seed or anything, um, I wanted to show you just exactly where it is. So we've got our normal tunnel, which is that way, which that leads to the town of Moore. And then just behind this, if we continue, is this tunnel. And this took a little bit to uh, dig out, but this tunnel goes to our Mesa area. So I'm gonna continue walking this way, but let's jump into our creative world and take a look real quick at the new plank textures that I decided to throw into the game. All right, so we're here in the creative world and uh, the new plank textures are actually just yappas. Um, I decided to throw these in because I think it's good for us to go more in the direction of where Minecraft is going with our texture pack um, rather than go like totally our own way, if that makes sense. And plus, these textures are actually really, really good. So I've made some different changes to them. Uh, the dark oak is more close to our dark oak old dark oak color so i made that change so this is pretty consistent uh, with our old color the jungle wood is a little grungier um, not as vibrant green it's got a little bit more brown in it and honestly i think it looks really really good i think it looks really nice paired with the spruce um, the spruce color has been toned down uh not toned down but like darkened a bit to match our old spruce color and so i think this this goes really well now um, with everything uh, that we used to have the uh birch has been kind of lightened i guess lightened and whitened uh, i've kept a little bit of the yellow tone to it um, but i've whitened it a bit so that it is a little bit closer to like that color um, and a little closer to uh, the color that we were using. But I do think it is nice. And then the jungle, which is, well, technically, it's the, these are the jungle planks, which are now our acacia planks, has been uh, just simply added. Now, the one texture that stands out to me is actually the jungle because it it seems like busier. I'm not sure why, it just seems busier. Uh, not a bad busy or anything, but this just seems busier. Um, I have actually tried, I've got all these different wood types with variation built in, but I didn't think it actually looked better. Honestly, these planks, I think, are pretty much like perfect the way they are. I don't think they need variation. Because of what Yappa's done with this whole smoothing um, and dirtying up, uh, with these areas on the planks, they kind of all blend together. And so you can see that they actually go really, really well just by themselves. So I don't think we really need to do anything to these. I've changed the color and you can see now what it looks like. I think it looks really, really good. And I think it actually goes with almost everything very well. It goes, it's more the direction that Minecraft is going uh, with the new textures. And so I think it's a, a more consistent feeling. Um, and so I think we're going to go with these instead of our old ones. Um, and so hopefully you can get behind that. I think it's going to be a good change. I will eventually get around to changing these to the new textures. Um, and yeah, I think it's going to be overall good. Just have to change some of the uh, various wood textures that we've got going. Let's see if there's any other changes I've made. And you can even see on these builds that this stuff actually goes really, really nicely. And I really do like it. I, I think I tried to pair the birch uh, to the stripped birch to try and make it a little bit uh, more consistent over, across the board. But I think this looks really good. Now you can tell there is a difference. This is richer than this. Um, and while I think the I think this needs to change a bit. Um, 
So I think this needs to change uh, in terms of the dark colors to be a little bit uh, brighter and a little more of this. This is a little like almost yellower. I don't know if that's the right color I'm thinking of, but it's almost yellow or orangey or, or redder. One of those warmer tints. It's a little warmer than this, um, a little brighter warmer. And so I think we maybe I'll change that. Um, but overall, I think it's a close enough color that we can get away with it because, I mean, the door looks perfectly fine with it. Nothing really, nothing in our world is broken because of this. So, yeah, just thought I'd show you this. I think this is a good change. I think it's going to be uh, good to be consistent with Minecraft uh, as it changes. Um, so, thought I'd give you a little update on that. This is kind of all of these, this blended together. I think it still looks really nice. So, yeah, this is the change we're going to go with. Uh, hopefully you guys like it. Uh, if you didn't, if you don't, just, I guess, keep the old ones. Also, there are some texture pack issues I found um, that I'm working to change to get an updated version out to you. So sorry about that. I know the end is real crazy right now um, with the void being all purple. Um, but kind of, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with that. It, it's only messed up when it's in the zip file. So I have to kind of figure that out. If you know anything about resource packs and you know what could cause that, then uh, yeah, please let me know. <laughs> but anyways, let's jump back into our world and take a look at our new area. I've been doing some work there. All right, we have made it to our area. And as you can see, I've been doing some work and there's even a house made. Um, I went ahead and made this because we needed a place to stay and I this isn't going to be where we are doing our main build so just made a quick little house we can take a look see at it just really quick it's nothing too crazy uh, what's happening let me out thank you so it's nothing real crazy, just kind of threw this together. It's in kind of the build style, but it's a little bit of a more rustic looking version of it. Um, I don't think it's that like amazing. I decided to put just, I had a couple stripped <laughs> logs, so I just put some chairs out. Um, overall, nothing crazy. Um, but this is mainly I built this because we needed a place to store all our shulker boxes. And so this is kind of our workplace. Um, and uh, been been doing a lot of resource gathering. Um, primarily been doing resource gathering for. Oh dear, we're not gonna have enough room there. I guess we'll go like that. Been doing primarily sorting of all this stuff to be able to have all these shulker boxes nice and sorted out. And overall, I think it's pretty good. These are all dirts and grasses and variations. This is plants. Uh, this is like rails and redstone stuff. This is miscellaneous stuff, pre-built and miscellaneous like wools and things like that. These are precious things. These are our tools. This is all netherrack because this is going to be kind of our... Uh, netherrack is going to be our primary source of scaffolding. Um, so I dug that tunnel out so that we could have some. Also went around our world and gathered some up. Got a lot of kelp as well because I've made a bubble vader over yonder to do some work. This is all going to be terracotta. Um, this is variations of terracotta, red sand. This is regular terracotta. These are the different stone types, uh, diorite through granite. This is stone brick stone, cobblestone. Uh, this is our standard like clay. Gathered a butt ton of clay so that we could have a lot of uh, bricks and things. And I think that's good. This is sand and sandstone slash glass. This is food. This is end variations slash I don't know what to do with the prismarine stuff, so I put it in there. This is uh, podzol, not podzol, mycelium. Uh, this is glass and dyes, and this is other variations that I don't know what to do with. Actually, what we can do is take this and put it in here. There we go. This is going to be mob drops, um, and we this one right now probably going to be split between zombie drops and something else. Um, but yeah, not really sure right now. And then these are the different wood types. Uh, this is jungle acacia birch, and this is oak spruce and dark oak. And this is nether stuff. So today what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be actually tackling something quite fun. Now I'm going to have to dip into my 
reserves of gunpowder again for the I don't know how many times I've had to do that um, the, this is the reason why we are uh, gonna be doing what we're doing today because we don't have any gunpowder and I, I would like gunpowder oh I didn't grab enough paper um, so what we're doing is we're gonna make a mob farm today the beginnings of a mob farm Let's see where's the Sun eh, we got time so over yonder um, this island also is going to be incorporated into the city um, that we are building um, it's gonna probably be anyway yep no oh yes it's probably gonna be more of a port city style um, because it is an island uh, we can just fly so it is going to be probably a uh, more of a port type city. Oh, we're going to need the render distance to be up. Um, and so it's going to be more based on trade by sea. Um, and I think that could be pretty good. We could also have some various like plantations or something and a small town up here or something. Nothing big. Don't want anything big up here because this is not like the main city area, but this can be utilized. I also thought this could, or this could also be like a jail, um, a big island, a, like jail island. Thought that could be interesting, um, and or have a jail that is a floating island that is like chained to this grant to this island. Thought that could be interesting as well. Um, so those are my thoughts for this island. Not really sure exactly what all to do. Um, but over this way, we will get into what I have actually been doing this entire time. So you can see some netherrack and then holy tower. That is right. That is our main tower um, for getting up and down. Um, I've already got all the various different levels all planned out decided to do this off camera because this is not like for the framework this is purely just to map things out in a very 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 broad uh, sense so this this is where the city center is going to be essentially uh, where though this actually where the torches are is actually the center um, the elevator is just a bubble vader that goes all the way to the top with some different ways to get out um, that is where the very bottom of a drop chute is going to be. Um, I'm thinking that the city is going to be flying from this height to this height. And so it's, more, it's like 110 blocks tall or something like that. Um, and I think that is a, a good height to have because there is also going to be some various different ways for it to fly coming up. Um, but from this point to this point is going to be sort of a drop shoot. Um, I actually have a drawing that I can show you. Um, and so what you are seeing is a the bottom part of a sort of like the angled drop shoot looking thing is where like garbage and stuff um, and excess materials are going to be going um, to be dropped out of. I don't know how we're going to do that necessarily, um, but I think we could make like a uh, sort of a build up a trash heap down here that is from the city i think that can be kind of interesting um so this it this is more representing where that is how tall that is um and it's not going to be like gigantic um it is going to be pretty big but it's not going to be gigantic um and now the uh this and i've actually just realized that i think there's a level that is missing here hold on let me check out my doodle yeah so um one thing i did was from here to here is 25 blocks um and somewhere like right around here in is like from here 15 blocks up is where um this portion um is going to be 10 blocks thick and it's going to be actually the uh the beginnings of like the foundations of where the first houses are so the houses actually start here uh, starting around here and going up um, and we'll work that out let me go sleep so that we can actually see some stuff all right that's better um, so this this to here is going to be a mixture of multiple things and then from here to here there's going to be like an internal 
body that uh, like a square that is 81 I want to say blocks wide all like 81 blocks on each side um, and this is gonna it's gonna be this tall and that's gonna be primarily where the main factory stuff is um, I'm thinking that we're gonna do, try and do something interesting I don't know exactly how I haven't planned the city out like fully I've just kind of blocked it out um, and so this is going to be more the factory zone uh, on this portion. Uh, and then there's going to be a big giant factory that's going to be like, uh, my thought is that this city doesn't have a leader that is like a king or queen or anything like that. The leader is actually the like the industry tycoon type person, the one that is actually the owner of this big city that is like running everything. It's kind of my thought process, um, not really a leader in the way of royalty or anything like that. Leader as in like the person that makes the city run. They have all the power in their hands because they literally keep the city afloat. It's kind of my thoughts. So let's go up. Um, okay, I can't fly. So this is the bubble vator and uh, if you, you will see we'll be able to tell what level we're at because I've put glass that kind of shows uh, where each floor is at um, and so we'll just take this all the way to the top because bubble vaders are just way easier to ride uh, and yeah now we can see from the top this is at Y level 230 I've left around 25 I think uh, 25 26 blocks to be able to as a little wiggle room uh, if we want to make certain things taller um, we can work that out now um, with a little bit of a, a build height uh, wiggle area but this is how big it's going to be um, so this from here to here is hundred and ninety three blocks and uh, this is located just directly over water. As you can see from our normal render distance, nothing else renders. So it's going to really look like it is totally on its own flying. Um, I thought that could be interesting. Um, and I think this is a good size. This is a good starting size, at least. Um, this is just going to be like the main size of the building like the main um, the main structure of the city now the thing that th this looks like it's going to be set up in diagonals it's not it's going to be um, 81 blocks and then a diagonal and this is going to be 81 blocks so it's going to be more of a uh, octagon rather than a uh, this square that is on a diagonal and so I think this is going to be quite a fun build to do it's going to be tedious and it's going to be annoying and so I've decided to start out making all the scaffolding stuff um, off camera because it's not interesting at all for you um, like there's nothing about this that's interesting and so yeah that's why I am going ahead and doing this uh, I will be putting out more of the scaffolding uh, as we go but later on in this episode we may do a little bit of planning uh, in terms of the city size or I may just do updates uh, per video as to show you exactly what the wireframe and stuff of the city is going to be I'm not terribly sure but this is not what we're doing today today we're going to be doing a flying house but we're going to be doing the internal works of that first which is going to be a mob farm now let's turn the render distance up a fair amount just so we can see so as you can see like turn the render distance up you can actually see that this is pretty surrounded by land um, and I, this is like dead smack in the middle of everything um, I think what we could do is we could make is this a warm ocean it is a cold ocean that's okay um, what we could do is make a house that is like my dog is going crazy. There are people that are outside currently that are doing uh, like a ceiling our uh, crawl space, and it's a uh, it's interesting. But he's going nuts. I think maybe let's do a house that is just randomly like over here. 
right around, let's say, here. How's this? I think this is good. Yeah, right around here. So I've actually got these little things, uh, lily pads. And so we're going to mark this as our spot for our house. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, pillar up. I need to grab some netherrack for one as our scaffolding, but two, um, we're going to pillar up 128 blocks so that we are out of any sort of mob rendered distance. This ocean is a really good starting spot um, for anything like this, but I want to uh, do this together. Um, this is going to also, I'm going to say fair warning, this is going to be very, very similar to Pixel Rift's um, his mob spawner because it's going to be in the exact same fashion it's going to be located in a hot air balloon eventually um, but the difference is he's got a basket underneath it we're going to have a legit house um, and so what we're going to be starting today is the core inside of the mob spawner so i think that's going to be fun so hang tight and let me get a gigantor pillar made and we can uh, really just start jumping in to this thing all right so we have our tower built and uh, we I went ahead and built the platform so what I've made is an 18 by 18 platform and it's got this plus in the center that we are going to knock out and this is where the mobs will drop it down from uh, we're gonna leave that pillar so I can actually get out of here um, so the mobs will fall down this hole and uh, eventually will fall down to their deaths uh, because I'm not going to make this an experience farm. Uh, we have the skeleton farm to make our tools better, and that actually is plenty good right now. Um, I just wanted a passive. I can collect uh, mob drops without having to, to do much work. Um, so next thing that we're doing is we need a, a couple platforms here to be able to have water run from. So there's going to be a dispenser here. And it's going to dispense water, and it's going to uh, occasionally dispense water, and it's going to rush up right to here and push all of the mobs down to their deaths. Um, so we need one on each of the corners. And so each corner you skip, and then what's going to happen is you go out six blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, on either side, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you connect it up with the diagonal. And then what you you will see is it'll start making kind of a, a like a I don't know what sort of shape this is a diamond sort of shape and or uh, I guess a diamond technically but it's just a square um, and so we're gonna be connecting it up like this and on all of four sides one two three four five six and so let me do this real quick and I'll come back with you all right so we have these platforms built and everything should be working fine now we just need to place our dispensers and uh, i will put a water bucket in there in just a second but what we're going to be doing is we're going to put spruce wood all the way around this because we need to have a sort of wall for the water to follow and i think that is going to be overall i think it's going to be very helpful because it'll keep all the water in and this water should be fine from this corner it should reach down there and stop beautiful this is exactly what we want so on all four corners it will continue to go all it will continue uh, to push right up to the edge and so all the mobs will fall now I have put dispensers in each corner um, with a water bucket and so that's what we're gonna where we're gonna put this water bucket is we're gonna put it right there now let me put a perimeter wall so none of the um, water can escape and then we'll be back to look at a bit of the falling mechanics and redstone side of things so that's gonna be fun because I don't do redstone all right so I have done a little bit more work um, I've been planning out the bottom portion got a little sort of area here just to have some stuff and we're going to come back to this area here but i have built these walls up as you can tell let's not fall off so i built the walls up looking good functioning perfectly doing the walls thing i don't know what i was going to say there now what we're doing is we're going to redstone this up a little bit now this is going to be very simple 
Um, this purely serves the purpose to show how the water is going to come out. So this is what the water is going to look like uh, when it comes out. It's going to flush up. All corners will flush up right to the hole, and we'll have a redstone clock that is going through and just kind of timing this out so that mobs will spawn, and then it'll turn on and turn off uh, just every once in a while to be able to flush them down the hole so they can fall and die. Um, but we don't want to have this on a button because that's silly. So, so we're going to have the redstone come in right here. Um, so... We're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then let's put a repeater here. So repeater is going to go into the block, power this block, which will then help us power through this here. And let's go ahead and sleep so we don't have any mobs spawning. I've lit this place up pretty well, but I don't want to take any chances. So that is why I have put this little platform here. Um, also, I tried to take some really cool screenshots. That's why you see spectator mode down here. I tried to take some cool screenshots and in shaders, and they were doing some uh, weird things. I'm not really sure. Ooh, phone going off. I'm not really sure what was going on, but Sildur's vibrant shaders were doing some wacky things. So I don't think this thumbnail is going to be able to have a uh, screenshot of. Do I have any nether netherrack? No, I don't. Ah, eh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, probably not going to be able to have screen, a screenshot with, um, shaders on this time around. I mean, I know you guys are terribly upset and offended, but it's okay. <laughs> um, so the redstone is going to come through here. So this can be powered, uh, 15 blocks, I believe from a strong signal. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's put a, put a repeater here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now if we have a button, say here, we should, in theory, see all of the water pour out. And, oh, that's Ako Taco. <laughs> um, here, we'll do that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that was funny. Um, so yeah, now all of the water comes out and they will get poured out and then the redstone clock will come through and boop and turn it all off. Very good. Glad this is functioning perfectly. So where is the redstone clock going to go? Well, that's what this area down here is for. Now, what we could do in theory is do a whole bunch of repeaters um, in like a big old line and a big old square and just have a signal that repeats through. But that doesn't really make much sense. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is a contraption made from hoppers, comparators, sticky pistons, an observer, and a block of redstone. Now I'm going to forewarn you. I do not do redstone. So if I derp this up, I'm sorry. And this is not going to be amazing redstone, but bear with me. Okay, let's get into this. Ooh, ooh, you saw my face. Um, so what we're going to try and do is have, I want the redstone signal to come in through here. Now we can't do this. Yeah, this is the signal. This is the area where the signal needs to uh, be because it's not the little derpy face. So we want to have, let's put a block down here so we can have this guy here, actually, we're going to want this to be out just a little bit. Let's put it out here. I think that is a good place to be. Sorry, Torchy. So we're going to have that there, that there. And then these two pist pistons, psh, these two hoppers are fed into one another. So if we put item an item into it, they'll go back and forth between the hoppers. Now, what we want to do, this is going to be interesting because... We're going to want to have a block here and we can take this and plop it right there. So now that should be in, I think, facing. Yes. Whoa. Give me, give me, give me the item. Stupid. Oh, that was interesting. So it saw, it, it saw... Did it see me pick, like throw something? 
What is C? You know, I don't know, but let's uh, turn the turn it off. All right, it's all turned off. I didn't. I just didn't want it to be bouncing like having a whole bunch of water droplets around here because that could get kind of annoying. Now, if I remember correctly, we want a comparator on either side facing in like that. I don't know. Well, we're just gonna leave it like that. Um, and we want a comparator. Come on, go. Come on, give it. Go. Yes. Come on. All right. This is. There we go. So comparator in and now let's get a let's see. Let's just do a block of stone on either side right like that. You need to move Mr. Redstone box. You can go right there. Now what's going to happen now is there should be a sticky piston that faces in. Now let's do this and this. I could do. I know I could probably stick it on top of the comparator pretty easily, but this is wow. Well, that texture is broken. There we go. Fixed it. Uh, I just had a random uh, model in our in our resource pack. So if you uh, have our texture pack on and you are discovering this as well. Um, yeah, that's all it is, is there's just a model that is a model JSON file that's in there that you don't need. Um, we're going to put a redstone block there. Um, and then what we're going to do is let's put a, a block right here and put a redstone signal here. And yeah, that's going to be interesting. So that's going to be on. So let's actually give, there we go. So we'll actually put the block on this one. Very good. So what we're going to be doing, if you didn't know, um, if you put a power a hopper with, I believe you have to power it with a strong enough signal. Uh, I could be wrong on this. I'm not a redstone genius or anything. Um, but if you power a hopper, it this hopper is powered currently by this redstone block, which means it's locked. It's not going to give its items away or anything like that. But it has to be powered by a certain amount, like a full stack, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. I really don't know. Maybe it's like that. Ooh, let's see here. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. This. Oh, bye, Terracotta. You're never coming back. Yay. Okay, what we need is this. Boom. So, as you can tell now, the water has come. And this is filtering into our area here. And so we have a full stack of cobblestone going from this hopper to this hopper. Now this hopper is now locked because of this redstone block. And so it cannot actually put items in until it reaches 64, a full stack. And then this comparator will power and move the piston over, thus unlocking this piston or hopper and then locking this hopper because it's pushed pushed over and the water has receded and so that's how our clock is going to work and it's going to just constantly push back and forth and back and forth and the observer right here is observing when this redstone block moves to right here then it gets an update turns on the water and allows the water to flow. And so once we figure out the timings of this correctly, we can, I imagine that we're gonna want this to be a bit uh, slower. And so we're gonna want the the most optimal amount of, I guess, timing for our mobs to be able to spawn, the water to go away, or well, we want the water to be able to go away, mobs to be able to spawn, and then we want the water to be able to push them and be out long enough that they all fall down and die and then so on and so forth. So this is what's going to be a happening. And uh, what I'm going to do for right now so we don't have to deal with this is I want Ooh, this is going to actually turn back on, isn't it? There we go. Oh, well, 
<laughs> okay, finally got the water to recede. So the next step that we have to do is we need to make a platform for these mobs to fall on. Now I'm going to have to do some moving around of things. Um, and essentially what is going to happen is we're going to make a platform that is, I'm probably going to make it this big just like one block out so the mobs really have no chance of not falling on it um, because I don't want to really have a glass tube or anything that comes down from this um, I don't think that's going to look good unless we make like a chimney but I don't think that even well a chimney might work we might I don't know I'll play we'll play with the design in the next episode today we're just getting the mo the farm up and running so let me do just a little bit more work um, and I'll come back with you for a little bit more of some a farm action. So let me get some stuff moved around and I'll be back. All right, it is day and we have a little platform down there that we're going to turn into a giant hopper uh, pad of hoppers, I suppose is what that's going to be. Um, it's probably i can't decide if i how i want to make it but how big i want to make it but let's jump down there i've gone ahead and started laying this out and what i want to do essentially is just make this so it all leads into this chest which will eventually be a uh, sort of a a multi storage system uh, right now it's not so much but we will get it there eventually um, I just want this to be a, a nice platform of of all these hoppers uh, because I don't really want any mobs falling outside of this area so we've got this area this which is a nice one two three four by four I think what we're gonna do just to play it on the safe side is make this a six by six or potentially let's leave the corners off and make it like this sort of thing right here so now the mobs have a sort of kill floor where they will fall hopefully all die now i think what we could do is put a roof on this i think we are done i think we have a nice sort of kill area i think this is actually pretty good so the roof of this is going to be very very simple um i figured what we could do is just do kind of a mixture of some cobblestone and stone maybe let's try a pattern like this i don't know if this is going to work i don't know how much how long the stone will last is the issue because we're actually kind of low on stone which is not very good um but that's okay. We can always make more. Um, but I think that could be interesting. It just adds a little spazazz to it. I don't know if that's even worth the effort. Let's just ditch it and go with cobblestone. <laughs> we, Because we're never going to see it. So there's no point in actually wasting these bricks, uh, in my opinion. So we're going to actually just make this cobblestone. I thought about being fancy, but fancy is a little overrated for these types of things. Um, but it's going to be very simple. Uh, just a block here so it's still going to be too tall so we aren't going to get endermen or anything but we don't really need that um, and honestly we will probably get uh, an ender farm going up uh, here moderately soon um, so I'm not really worried too much about that um, and I do actually want to we're going to actually want to light this up as we go so let's do that, and then we'll just kind of go with the flow. So let me go ahead and get this roof on, and uh, I think it's going to be good. All right, we are here, down here. I added a few more chests, and this thing is a working. I am so happy. Like, I am so happy. This is working. You'll see some mobs, I think, here soon. The water should be pumping out, and... Uh, we're just going to look at this hole until mobs actually, there they are, coming over, and, uh, oh, here they come, yay, blah, 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 blah. and they are all just dying, oh, this is great, I am so happy, and this actually kind of looks cool, like, this is a kind of cool, it looks like almost a, 
like from Galaga, <laughs> the ships from Galaga. That's kind of fun. Um, so I've added a few chests, so we have some backup. Um, but I am I am quite happy with this. We're, I'm just gonna let this fill up. I'm just gonna AFK and kind of just go AFK overnight. Um, I'm gonna probably set up a little AFK place. Oh, I may set one up up there because I lit up the top of the area you need to be a certain amount of blocks away and there are no mobs that are going to be spawning down here i guess drown can spawn but there's not going to be enough of them to really care too much because i mean look at this oh it is glorious it is so glorious look at that 16 gunpowder it takes me forever to just go and get gunpowder oh i am so happy guys well that is going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and definitely huge shout out to Pixel Riffs for actually having done this in the first place, uh, because this is legit a copy of his. So if you haven't checked him out, go check him out. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this little derpiness of Redstone. It's not too much, and it's just a very simple farm, but it is good for this world, because I wanted some a simple AFK place to be able to go and get all sorts of mob drops and not really have to think too much about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did leave a like in real life and if you uh, enjoyed everything and you're looking forward to this place and you're looking forward to all these plans and things that are happening, then feel free to subscribe. Join the little family we've got going here and I will see you guys in the next episode.